द कैंडल टीयर्स बाय सदल हसन मंटो प्लांटेड इन द ग्रबी नीच इन द पीलिंग वॉल द कैंडल हैड क्राइड ऑन लाइट अलॉन्ग वैक्स हैड फॉलन ऑन द डैम फ्लोर स्कैटरिंग लाइक अ मिल्की फ्रोजन ड्रॉपलेट्स लिटिल लाजो हैड बीन क्राइंग फॉर अ पर्ल नेकलेस हर मदर स्ट्रंग द कैंडल वैक्स एंड टीयर्स ऑन अ स्ट्रिंग एंड मेड अ नेकलेस फॉर हर लाजो प्लेस द स्ट्रिंग ऑफ वैक्स पर्ल अराउंड हर नेक ग्लीफुली एंड वेंट आउट क्लैपिंग हर हैंड्स विद जॉय नाइट फेल अ फ्रेश कैंडल वॉज लिट in the grim encrusted niche its one eyed light took in the room's darkness and for an instant flickered brightly with surprise but after some time as it grew used to its grim surroundings it began to look all round with a steady unblinking gaze little lajo lay fast asleep on a cot fighting with her friend bindu in her dreams telling her vehemently that she would not marry of her doll to a bindu's baby boy doll because he was terribly ugly lajo's mother stood at the window looking eagerly at the mud splattered on the silent and dimly lit street across the road hanging from an iron pole a lalten dozed like a sleepy watchman in the cold of winter's night directly in front of her on the stoop of a closed restaurant the clock tower struck in a 12 sleepy haze the last note shivered briefly in the december night then pulled by a blanket of silence over itself and went to sleep like a chilly blast of air the sound of a tinkling bell reached her ears to hear the sound fully well she concentrated with all her will power in the stillness of the night the bell sounded like the last bit of breath left rattling in a dying man's throat Lajo's mother sat down with satisfaction. Soon the tired neighing of a horse rent the silent night. And Tanga came and stood beside the lalteen. Its coachman got off, patted his horse and looked towards the window. The blinds of the window were rolled up and he could see the shadow figure inside. The coachman wrapped his coat blanket snugly around himself and put his hand in his pocket. He had 3 and 1/2 rupees of which he kept aside a rupee and four ranas for himself and the rest he had beneath the cushion on the tanga's front seat. Then he moved towards the stairs going up to the brothel. Lajo's mother Chandu Sunyari got up to open the door The coachman Madhu came in blotted the door and clasped Chandu Sunyari to his bosom God knows how much I love you Had I met you in my youth my horse and cart would have been sold off a long ago and with that he placed one rupee in her hand chandu sunyari asked is that all here take this too he placed a silver ana in other hand i swear on your life this is all i have the horse stood meaningly softly in the cold night and the lalteen atop its pole dozed on as before madhu lay on the iron coat and dead to the world beside him chandu sunyari lay with her eyes wide open 
looking at the drops of the molten wax as they fell on the damp floor and froze into the small milky balls. Suddenly, like a woman possessed, she flew out of her bed and went to sit beside Lajo's bed. Drops of her wax trembled on Lajo's chest. To Chandu Sunyari, bleary eyes, it seems as though her Lajo childhood crouched, hidden among the those drops of frozen tears. She raised her trembling hand and plucked the wax bead from Lajo's throat. The thread slipped from the nearly empty puddle of molten wax in the niche and fell to the floor where it promptly went to sleep in its stony embrace. Now the room became not just quiet but dark too.